I cannot stop eating these. Oh my gosh, you guys. These homemade soft pretzels are so easy to make. They are incredibly delicious. You are gonna love these. You have to make them now. Do not wait, seriously, amazing. Pretzels are essentially a bread dough. So we gotta do a little bit of prep with the yeast. Sound good? Let's bake. We're gonna start off by adding some warm water to a stand mixer with the bowl. Remember, I like to go a little bit hotter in between 115 and 118 degrees because that bowl is usually cold and it drops the temp. Next, we're gonna hit it with some light brown sugar and then sprinkle the top with some active yeast. I'm using one packet or seven grams. And then using your whisk, simply mix this together until it's completely combined. You wanna make sure that yeast is feeding all over that sugar in the warm water. Let it sit for five to seven minutes. And then you're gonna see this sort of foamy raft that sits on top. It's actually called a raft because, well, it sits on top of the water. Genius, I know. You'll even see some bubbles on the top and they may be popping. This is perfect. At this point, go ahead and fix your hook attachment to your stand, drop it down, and we're gonna put it on low speed. The first ingredient we're going to add in is some unsalted melted butter. We're next going to hit it with some sea salt. This is gonna help in the rising process. And then we're gonna add one cup of all-purpose flour at a time while the mixer is mixing. We're gonna do this because it may need a little bit more flour or a little bit less. Pretzel dough can be real tricky, so that's why I do it one cup at a time. So at this point, I've got five total cups. Let's go ahead and continue to mix it on low speed and then boost it up a little bit. Another notch to low to medium speed is totally perfect here. And then after a minute or two, let's give it a look. You can see it's still a little bit sticky and that's what we don't want. So I'm going to turn the mixer back on and I'm gonna add about a quarter cup more of all-purpose flour. And at this point, I'm going to need it for a total of five minutes. This is perfect for me, five and one quarter cups. It may be five and one third for you, so you're gonna to have to test it and see what works. While it is kneading, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my container and hit it with a little bit of oil. Just gonna grease up the bottom and the side so that the dough can sit in there and not stick to it whenever it is that I need to take it out. So at this point, let's go over, check out our dough. It looks perfect. Just go ahead and use your hand and scrape all that beautiful, nice, soft, warm dough right off the hook. And then of course, take out your bowl. And then we're just gonna transfer this right into that container. If you have a glass bowl, totally fine. This part's totally up to you. I just like these containers because guess what? They got a lid and it fits perfect. And for a little trick, just like in a lot of my other bread recipes, I put it in the oven, shut the door, or even if you leave it cracked, that's totally fine. Hit the light. It gets it to that perfect proofing temperature, and we're gonna let it sit for about an hour or until doubled in size. And Comey's, it's just like I always say every week, you start understanding these cooking techniques and tips, like proofing your bread in the oven with a light on, you start applying it to all of your bread making. So it rises all the time, and you'll never buy anything pre-made from the store again, because homemade from scratch just tastes better. I always say it. So now, when we're about 10 minutes away from the dough done rising, we are gonna add a very large pot right onto a burner, and then we're gonna put in some cold water. I know this seems weird because we've got bread dough, right? But we're actually gonna parboil it. First, let's hit it with a little bit of baking soda. I know you're scratching your head. Crank the heat onto high because we wanna bring it to a boil. So what this alkaline water solution does is it gelatinizes the bread. And in the gelatinization process of the starch, you're sort of changing the viscosity and it's just taking it one step further in the dough process. You probably don't wanna hear about any of that. Just so you know, it helps brown up the bread, gives it that nice outer crust, still tender in the inside, boom, done. Okay, now for the dough. Let's go ahead and take it right out of the oven. It looks fantastic. It's doubled in size, it's super soft and then put it right on the countertop. No need for flour or anything like this. The oil on the outside is actually gonna help so that it doesn't stick to the marble countertop. And we're going to cut a nice little chunk of dough off. We're gonna put it onto the countertop and then we're gonna roll it out until it's about 24 inches long. Please don't get a ruler or measuring tape. Do it by eye, no need to go any crazier than that. Now to make the pretzel, go ahead and make a U. We're going to cross it over in the center once. We're gonna flip it over one more time so it's like a double knot. And then simply take the two ends and pull it down to yourself. Give a little fix, make it look like a pretzel. Excellent, 
perfect. Transfer it over to a sheet tray lined with parchment paper or just on parchment paper and repeat the process until the dough has been used up. And real quick, I've got a bowl with an egg yolk in there. I'm gonna add in some cold water and then using a fork, just mix it together. This is just to get ready because we're gonna brush the tops of the pretzels after they're done boiling in the alkaline solution, gonna help brown it up. Now let's go over to the water. You can see it is at a nice boil. This is perfect. Add in one pretzel at a time. You can drop it in with your hands too. No need to use a slotted spoon. And I'm just gonna sort of keep pushing water over the top of it just to make sure it's getting on all sides. This takes about 25 to 30 seconds total. Go ahead and take it out and knock it a few times. Make sure all the water is completely off of the pretzel. I'm going to set it on a sheet tray lined with a sill pad, which is a silicone mat. If you have this fantastic, you can still use parchment paper if you do not. Now to finish these off before they go in the oven, remember that little egg wash I made? We're going to gently brush it on all sides with that egg wash. Don't just dump it on there, just do a little quick light brush. And then of course, we're gonna season it with a little bit of sea salt on all the top of it. This helps flavor it up. I'm actually not gonna season up two of them, so you do the same, because I'll show you what's coming next. Going in the oven on 450 degrees, and it's gonna take in between 12 or 15 minutes or until they are perfectly golden brown, and dude, yeah, these look absolutely insanely delicious. Yeah, so you remember those two pretzels that I did not put any salt on? Let's go back to junior high and high school, hanging out at the mall, what was the spot? Annie Ann's pretzels, and no way was I getting salt on it. I wanted that cinnamon and sugar crust all around the outside. So why not do that now? Go ahead and brush those two unsalted pretzels with some unsalted melted butter. This is gonna help coat it because just like in my churros recipe, as I mentioned, we are going to dredge it in sugar and cinnamon. This is seriously reliving my childhood. I could never get enough of these. And you can do all the pretzels like this. You can do one or two or half, whatever, totally up to you. Now let's plate up so it's slow-mo time. I usually serve these up on a plate, on a cutting board. In this case, I've just got a piece of parchment paper. It can get a little bit messy and salt goes everywhere, so I just wanna make sure I catch it all. But that's why I'm doing parchment and it's cheap. Next, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of grainy mustard, but I do have to say that I have an amazing beer cheese dip on my site that you should, of course, check out. Gonna garnish with a little bit of fresh parsley. Looks fantastic, and man, check out these beauties. So easy to make, so incredibly delicious. You can absolutely do these. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to watch this video because you know that recipe is so bomb. See you next time.